It's a leech! Kill it! This poor man has just been slaughtered by a vampire. The body's still warm.
Informing London's inhabitants of the presence of vampires. What does that make me? A double or a triple agent?
Done. Mr. Throgmorton should be happy. Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. May I have your attention for a minute? Good evening, sir. My name is Giselle Paxton, but I don't have time for men like you. Have we met before? No, but I just need to look at your fancy clothes to know that you must be desperate to visit the docks at night. That's quite judgmental of you. Sir, I've led enough strikes when I had a job to identify you as an enemy of the working class. May I ask what you do for a living? I'm killing myself scraping for a living. And you? Have you ever had to struggle in your entire life? As I told you, I'm a doctor. You have to work a lot to earn that title. Oh, a doctor. Hmm, born with money in a nice house, were we? Was Daddy a banker or a doctor himself? Why such hatred? Are you judging me by my clothes and my job? Of course I am. Fuck, you're so blind. You don't even see your privilege. Lazy people like you disgust me. What can you tell me about this vicinity? Tell you what, just spend a few weeks here and then ask me that question again. If you're still alive, I mean. If you have something to say, say it. I'm getting tired of all this. Oh. You want information instead. 
Well, here's some for you. Giselle Paxton does not like you at all, Doctor. You don't know me, Miss Paxton, and yet you see me as an enemy. Oh, your manners, your clothes, your words tell me everything about you, sir. I know your kind, and you don't belong here. You're right. I have never suffered from poverty. But that doesn't mean I don't fight it and its consequences. I really doubt you ever had to fight for anything in your life, Dr. Reed. You speak of strikes and class enemy. Am I right to assume you're involved in trade union activism? You bet I am. Well, I was. Nowadays, I'm just another worker blacklisted by the big companies. You lost your job because of your beliefs. Those bastards really hate a worker who refuses slave wages and unsafe conditions, especially when it's a woman. Isn't the whole point of trade unions to help workers in need? Why don't they support you? A few nights back. I lost the money my companions had asked me to hide. With me and my sister being penniless, they thought I stole it. What really happened? I drank too much that night. Strange men saw me count the money in that bar. Some sort of militia in uniform. I'm sure they robbed me. I'm looking for Sean Hampton. Can you help me? What is it you want? Does he owe you money? Has he displeased your royal highness? I'm no snitch, Mr. Fancy Pants. Well, I'll leave you for now. Goodbye, Miss Paxton. It's locked, all right. It's locked. Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Can I help you? A fancy doctor lurking at night by the docks. <laughs> Not fishy at all. And what about you? Working outside at night in this dangerous part of town. You want to know my secret? I'm trying to earn money. And I'm Lottie Paxton, by the way. Is it not dangerous to work here at night? As long as I have good legs, I can run away from trouble. The sad saint now provides me and my sister a bed and a roof. I don't want to lose that. Are you homeless, Miss Paxton? Mr. Hampton's night asylum is our new home now. It's a safe place for me and my sister. What can you tell me about the sad saint? It's just the nickname of Sean Hampton, the sad saint of the East End. He gave me shelter. And he's not always sad. What can you tell me about this place? How are things here? It may be okay for a strong girl like me, but a dandy doctor from the city like yourself. You better watch your back, Mr. Reed. You really think I should go back to a safer place, miss? No. I think you had better stay and help as many people as you can. Just avoid the wet boot boys. Those bastards are worse than the epidemic. Which local dangers must I avoid? Well, the gangs, the thieves, the drunks, the jobless. A man with your fancy clothes will attract a lot of attention. Well, I am not someone so easily intimidated. Glad to hear that. And if you get into trouble, you can always seek help at Sean Hampton's shelter. No one would dare to be violent there. I'm looking for Sean Hampton. Can you help me? Mr. Hampton must be in his office at the night asylum he manages, I suppose. Why do you want to see him? He was a patient of mine at the Pembroke Hospital, but he left abruptly. I see. Well, Mr. Hampton is a discreet and dedicated man. I'm sure you'll find him soon enough. Goodbye, Miss Paxton.
Come now, Lottie. There is still much work to do. Glad to see you again. Lottie, tell me about the death of your mother. Giselle killed her, plain and simple. She killed her with her daily whims, her laziness, and her complaints. That's quite a statement. You can't kill someone because you're fickle. Mother was very ill, but I forgave Giselle. What I couldn't stand was how she cried at her funeral like she was the one left alone. Perhaps your sister is not as tough as you are. I know that, and I don't blame her. It just makes me sad that my own sister is the person I understand the least. Giselle is the only family you have left. Don't you think it's time you forgave her? Sometimes words are harder to forgive than acts, Dr. Reed. Goodbye, Miss Paxton. Mr. Delaney collecting old newspaper articles about bombings. It's locked, all right. Glad to see you again. Lottie, tell me about the wet boot boys. I know they've threatened you. Edwina Cox wanted me to provide her with information about Mr. Hampton's resources. I refused. Is that not dangerous? Fuck them and their lies. They claim they protect the interests of the neighborhood, but they are just greedy parasites like all the rest. I respect your courage, Miss Paxton. And I hope life will never wear you down. Dr. Reed, <laughs> you know how to make a girl blush. I am glad you came to the docks, whatever your real reasons are. Goodbye, Miss Paxton.
Why the long face, Doctor? Is it all that worries you, Sean? My long face? Really? This is a blessing for me to become a skull. Immortality gives me more time and energy, if truth be known, to run a shelter. What more could I want? Since you left Pembroke, the amount of blood that has been shed, it's hard to believe you, Sean. Ask what you will. As the Lord is my shepherd, I will not speak a lie to you. Aren't you afraid of what you've become? We are blessed, Doctor. Can't you see it? The Lord has made us able to walk amongst the plague and aid those that need it. Do you think this is a blessing when God's own house and holy symbols repel you? If that is your burden, Doctor, so be it. But I do not fear the cross nor am I forced to take the life of another. My kind doesn't share your imperfections. But you must drink blood now to survive. No, not your scripture. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So saith the Lord. I only need to eat flesh, no blood. Why return here? This is my home. These people are my flock. You will always find me where I am needed. Wonders never cease. Scal managing an asylum. And what of you? A vampire doctor? Meals laid out before you. Yet you restrain. And what about William Bishop? He tried to take care of you. But this hunger, this thirst, cannot be restrained. Alas, poor William. He had a good soul, but was weak in spirit. He could not shake the thirst for booze, never mind blood. But have faith. My will is far stronger than his. Why did you kill Miss Jones at the Pembroke Hospital? Killed old Harriet? You must be mad, Doctor. Why would I do such a thing? So you claim Miss Jones' death was not by your hand, nor the other incidents at Pembroke? Though Harriet was an angry, spiteful woman, she was one of God's creatures. I have nothing but love for all he has made. But you were close to her? Of course. But she was lost, separated from the fold. She did not see the hand of the divine in my blessed condition. People have been murdered. I've seen the blood. I don't believe you can be trusted. Have a little faith, Doctor. If you will follow, I will guide you to the light. How do you plan to do that? Take this key of the old sewers. The entrance is by the river bank, south from here. There you'll find all the proof you need. Very well. You have definitely intrigued me. I hope you're right, Sean. I'll be here when you return. If you still think I'm a threat then, well, I surrender myself to your judgment. Good evening, Mr. Throgmorton. Dr. Reed, can I be of any assistance? Have you noticed anything suspicious lately? I put up your public service announcement. Consider the common folk warned about the vampiric presence. Thank you, Dr. Reed. You may not realize it, but you saved a great many lives today. Do you really think they could be useful? See the sad saint of the East End? How a single man can help so many people? I consider myself the discreet protector of these men and women. You've never faced, let alone killed, a vampire Ichabod. You're a fraud. No, I'm not. 
I may embellish the truth concerning my achievements, but I'm totally dedicated to my quest. Stop fooling yourself. You've never faced a vampire before. You wouldn't stand a chance. Well, that's not true, sir. I've already faced one of these creatures. Oh, really? <laughs> and you're still alive. Well, we... We did not actually fight. I let it go. What do you mean? I entered the vampire's den. Oh, the stench was terrible. I was ready to kill it. But then I saw it. Just a suffering soul like you and me. I spared her. Tell me about the vampire you spared. It was... She was a girl. Her body was a mess. I could see pus running from the deep wound. She was crying in pain. You cared about her. That's what defines us as human, Ichabod. Yes, but she was a truly evil creature. I'm haunted by the tragedies she caused ever since I spared her. Tell me, Ichabod, why do you consider yourself the protector of Sean Hampton Shelter? He is a truly inspiring example. Dedicated, pious. His shelter is open to all, whoever they are. Most admirable. Goodbye. And good hunting, Mr. Throckmorton. The wet boots shouldn't be fighting each other. They've got bigger problems elsewhere.